Hello and welcome once again to Baked Beans Garage, where you can call me Mr. Rockefeller because this rig's about to have heat and air conditioning. Today, we're working on this lump. What houses your heater core and your AC evaporator and all the blending doors and whatnot. Uh, all the seals in these like to go bad. These vacuum motors like to go bad. Uh, we're gonna fix all that. Let's get into it. So I pulled that whole lump out in a past episode. I don't know which one, I can't keep track anymore. I can barely count to 10. And here it is. Once you have the dash out, it's really not that complicated to take out. You just have some studs and nuts what come through the firewall. Uh, so, since they're available, I have a new heater core and AC evaporator. Also gonna redo all these foam seals uh, with just some stuff from pretty much Walmart. Also gonna test all of these vacuum actuators, what work your blending doors. We'll show you how to do that. It's not that hard. But yeah, this will probably be a bit of a short episode because this is all I'm gonna do today. So first things first, we're just gonna take it apart and kind of see what's in there. Hopefully there's not that many surprises. Another reason this will be a short episode is I don't think I'm too liable to find more rust to fix. That has been the struggle with this rig. So I'm just gonna start taking screws out and see what happens. Haven't done a Volvo one before. I've done a few Volkswagen ones, but uh, I did, I'm just as clueless as you are. Let's find out. All right, so now we got the thing all blowed apart. This is, I think, as far as I'm gonna have to tear it down. There is one more blending door in here. <clears throat> this is what selects your, your hot versus your cold. However, Volvo was nice enough to actually use a proper rubber gasket on that door, so I'm not gonna need to do anything to that guy there. Uh, a typical 80s Euro car woes. We got, you know, it's full of leaves and other junk. Uh, this predates cabin filters by a couple decades. What you can do, and what I'll show later, is use the media from a household AC filter. Uh, you can see here where I put one on my Rabbit pickup. Uh, j pretty much just find a way to affix that over the intake for the blower, and that prevents all that. So, the blower motor itself is quite stiff. I think I'm just gonna replace it for the sake of the benefactor, and you know, he doesn't mind spending another $30, but I will try to revive this one because I have had success in the past doing that. And if you're not familiar, the little fella I took out of that hole, this guy here, this is the what's called the final stage resistor. Basically, when you move the selector switch on your dash to pick your fan speed, that's just determining which route the electricity is going through this guy. So here you can see there's three different resistive elements and the switch is just gonna change the routing through there to give you different resistances to step down the voltage to the blower motor. That's what gives you your different speeds. And of course, with a resistance, you're gonna generate heat, which is why it's mounted here, right in the airstream, to dissipate that heat. Smart. So yeah, this is pretty typical of an 80s car. Here's one from a Mark II Golf, and this one is from my E36. Both of these guys predate, you know, transistorized uh, DC motor control. This guy is on the cutting edge of 1994 technology, and these are notorious for going bad. Uh, if you own an E36, you probably know exactly where this guy goes. Great time, huh? So anyways, I'm just gonna clean this up, hose it down a little bit, and then we'll start slapping it back together with the new heat exchangers. All right, so first, I suppose we will try to revive this motor. I am hoping it's just the bearings and some old grease that's making it stiff. So to try to remedy that, I'm just gonna soak some penetrating oil into there. If it is not the bearings and it is the brushes that are making it stiff, then we're pretty much hosed. Uh, 
this motor casing is crimped together. There's no way to get it apart without being quite destructive. So we're going to let the penetrating oil sit and see if anything happens. In the meantime, we can get to testing these vacuum solenoids. Here again is my best friend, this little hand suction pump. All we need to do is hook this to that through various sizes of tubing and whatnot. And you give her a pump and see if something happens. That one works. Of course, these run off a of vacuum, and if you have a gasser and they leak too terribly badly, you may end up with, uh, you know, idle problems and whatnot. But since this is a diesel, it has a constant displacement vacuum pump, so it doesn't really matter if there's a leak. But if it leaks too bad, it won't actuate. So here is the... Easy now. Here is the panel out of the dash. And when you move your selector where you want the air to go, all it's doing is rotating this rotary valve and choosing which leg the vacuum suction is going to. So that's all it is right there. What runs your, you know, do you want it on your face? You want it on your feet? You want defrost? That's all that runs that. Uh, basically a little mechanical computer, which is pretty neat. Uh, this is straight out of the 80s. Everything newer has, you know, electronic actuators and whatnot. Lovely. If you don't have one of these, what you can do is shove whatever it actuates backwards, put your finger over the vacuum line, and just see if it holds it in place. Now I'll lift my finger off. It works good. So, this guy right here, what has a nipple on either end, this is what sends the air either to your feet or to your face. We can see nothing's happening. So all these are obviously a, a vacuum actuator. There's a little diaphragm in there and wherever the pressure is on that diaphragm, it's gonna actuate the piston in and out. Uh, this, I suspect the, uh, the diaphragm is torn. Nothing's happening when we put vacuum to it. And there's no good way to fix these because these are crimped around the outside and there's no good way to get in there without making a mess. So I'm gonna try to extract the one from the parts car and just cross my fingers. And if that doesn't work, we just might have all the air all the time because I uh, can't really get these anymore. And to my Scandinavian friends that watched my Will It Run video on this car, I do apologize, but it is indeed staying a parts car. Oh, you come fix this rust or I'll sell it to you if you really want. Oh, hey buddy. There's a cat. Hey! I may not be a smart man. So I don't know if I'm getting to that fella with without taking the whole heater box out of this car. And I don't really want to do that. I will get the vacuum gun and maybe try to test it. And then I'll see how dedicated I am to getting that thing out of here. Oh, I hear it moving. If it goes pssst when I take the hose off, uh, I'm in trouble. Oh, I should not have volunteered myself for this. I found this as well. So I don't have the chromosomes nor the daylight to deal with this today, so maybe tomorrow. Well, I forgot how absolutely disgusting this thing was. So I've sucked out most of the mouse turds and let it air out, sprayed some bleach cleaner on the floor. So hopefully I don't get the black plague. Still a possibility. Anyways, just got to get the center console out so I can get to that guy back there. Uh, the console itself, there's two 10 millimeter screws at the base here and then a 12 millimeter nut on either side like that. And under here, there's a few screws 
You just gotta pry this bezel off. Those guys. The radio, I forget how to get out. We'll figure it out. Uh, the ashtray pulls out except for one screw that's hidden behind that little cover that was already broken. Had to Google it, you just pull the knobs off and there's two little tangs back there. You pull inwards with a screwdriver and then it slides out. And now that we're in here, the relay panel and fuse box just uh, unclips from that tray there. We gotta get these two runners out, which is just one Phillips, and it slots in down the other end. And then we'll pull the distributor box out, and then we'll be able to get to that uh, solenoid right there. So that was pretty miserable, but it's out. Uh, it's just two 10 mil nuts and a little press-on nut for the pin. Uh, and we can hear air moving as I actuate that. So let's go stab that in and start slamming that box back together. All right, now to address all these crumbly old foam seals or what's left of them, I'm just gonna scrape off the rest that I can and clean up the doors with some brake clean and some scotch Bright, and we'll use this uh, universal window weather stripping to replace them. So that's all done up. I ended up going around all the seals with this E6000. It's good stuff, it stays flexible, and it's pretty strong too. I don't really trust the cheap glue on this stuff, but that's all nice and sealed up. Now it's time to get the heater core back in. So this is held in by these two bands, four screws, and it just sets down in there like that. I'm not gonna use the weather stripping stuff on uh, to seal the heater core because I don't know what that's gonna smell like when it gets hot. So I'll use some speed tape because this is fine with heat. And with that all buttoned up, we can start actually putting some screws back in. Now these come sealed with this tar stuff that I don't really like, so I'm just gonna use a thin bead of RTV all around there. So now it is time for the evaporator. Uh, keep in mind this drain hole down here for the condensation, make sure that's not plugged up. And this gasket from the original ones is still in decent shape because of course Volvo rubbers. <clears throat> so I'll reuse that, just gonna tape it on here. Now this one is a bit of a different shape than the original, so I think I will have to get creative with the tape again to, to get as much of the air through there as possible instead of leaking around the sides. So that wraps it up as far as the box itself it goes. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the uh, blower motor unstuck, so I'm just gonna have to wait for a new one, but I can put that in once it's back in the car. Uh, not to be forgotten, this seal here, and then the final stage resistor. Uh, I think a visual continuity check works well enough for this. Oh, this is, that's for a Volkswagen. There it is. Yeah, they don't look burnt up. It's probably good enough. I forgot to mention earlier, if your fan only works on the highest setting, this guy is probably your problem. Because uh, on the highest setting, it just bypasses this guy entirely and just sends all 12 volts straight to the fan. Anyways, let's put some uh, bolts in the car. So I think the easiest way to do this is gonna be to hang it from the two studs over by the heater core and then set this bar in with the two screws up in the intake. Uh, but then again, <clears throat> if you're a long time viewer, you know that's just a guess. So we're gonna find out. Speaking of the heater core thingy, uh, it needs a gasket. I went and made one out of some closed cell foam I had laying around. When you're working with that kind of foam, you're always better off just burning the hole through with a very hot socket, not trying to cut it. It will look prettier and work better. So, uh, either it's going to work or I'm going to learn something.
All right, so now that the box is hung in there, we want to prevent the leaves from blowing out the uh, AC vents because that's kind of annoying. Uh, the factory solution that you'll find when you take your 740 apart is this grate right here, which I, it's glued right there. And it, some engineer thought that would do something. And I guess you could repurpose it over the intake itself, but uh, I have a better fix. I've done this a few times and it's very effective at preventing this, which is your AC evaporator becoming your cabin filter. That's not very good for uh, heat transfer. So I like to take one of these cheapo matted household AC filters and cut it up and kind of plaster it onto there, what for catching all the leaves and stuff. So I just make a little cardboard template and then cut it out. Goodbye. <clears throat> now I won't claim that this is a very beautiful solution, but it does work quite well. Position that like so. And our best friend, speed tape. Uh, if I haven't introduced this to you before, this is 3M425. Uh, they put it on airplanes when there's not time for the sealant to cure up before it needs to fly. And it has a shelf life. And since I fix airplanes for a living, it's free. So I'm sure you can imagine what's gonna happen now. So again, it's not very beautiful. You probably won't win Pebble Beach with this method, but it works quite well. And uh, the tape's gonna be your most expensive part if you're trying to do this yourself. I wouldn't wanna use duct tape like from Home Depot or something like that, because uh, age and humidity will break down that adhesive. This stuff will stay on forever. All right, so I got the new blower motor here through the uh, squirrel cage on it. I'll show you how to test that. Now this is an earlier style blower motor, what with only one connection. Uh, later 740s and I believe the 900 series cars, they have a two terminal uh, connector. We just got one here, of course. With that, the case is the ground. I'll likely clean up one of these screw holes and run a ground jumper straight to the car just for extra grounding. So I got my jump pack and I'm just gonna touch it with some volts. It worked good. Ah, oh, a jump pack yelling at me. Easy now. Also found a new uh, final stage resistor, so I guess I'll throw that in for good measure. I'll also take some of the same uh, window weather stripping to make a seal around here. And again, when you're working with any of these uh, foam seals, you're much better off cooking up a screwdriver and just burning your holes instead of trying to drill them. It'll look nicer and work better. Lovely. And back in the car, this goes with the terminal facing towards the front right side of the car for, again, Swedish reasons, but I don't know. So there we are. I also put a couple of volts to the fan just to make sure it's not grinding on anything in there. And we're all good. Got the new resistor in. Uh, I forgot to mention, uh, write all the colors of the vacuum hoses that go to each of the solenoids because those are all color coded. You don't want to be mixing them up. Anyways, I think that's about it for today. Uh, that's the last step until I start doing all the routing and attachment of the wiring and get them vacuum hoses back in. But that'll be later when I start dealing with the dash. So as always, I do hope you found this video informative or entertaining or something like that. If you're still watching, just know I appreciate it. Uh, again, any support for the channel is very much appreciated. So please do leave a like, comment, subscribe, whatever all the YouTubers say. Anyways, I'm going to get on to some electrics, maybe throw an engine in this thing. Uh, this has been Baked Beans Garage. I am Chinchilla, and I'll see you next time.